Virtual Dub, a very powerful video editing software that allows you to actually extend its capabilities using filters. Now, I talk about Virtual Dub from time to time. And a lot of the time, I sort of gloss over the part about, you know, how to install the software. But the truth is, thanks to the complexity of Virtual Dub, I think these details bear mentioning. This video is a suggestion from YouTube user Pitpony2006, and will come to you in four parts. First, how to install Virtual Dub itself. You, of course, need this to, well, use any part of the program. Then, with that out of the way, we actually move on to something, you know, at a higher level. You see, the thing is, Virtual Dub doesn't actually read a lot of different video file formats, and the type of video files it can produce as an output at the end of the day is also limited by what you have installed on your system. Which is why the second thing we're going to be looking at is FF Input Driver. The third thing we're going to be looking at is a video codec called X264VFW. After you've installed both these things, you'll be able to read and write more file formats. Finally, we're going to be looking at how to install an individual plugin. We'll be using DShaker as an example, but you can apply the same set of steps to basically any other plugin. So yeah, what you're seeing on screen right now is a contents page. You can click on those buttons at the site to jump to the relevant part of the video if you so desire. But yeah. The whole point of this video is that hopefully by the end of it, you'll be able to use Virtual Dub to its full potential. So let us begin with downloading Virtual Dub itself. To do this, you want to point your browser to virtualdub.sourceforge.net. Then on this page here, you'll notice that there are two different versions of Virtual Dub, a version that is 32-bit and a version that is 64-bit. Now. For the sake of compatibility and just to make your life much easier, we're just going to be going for the 32-bit version. Really, even if you have a 64-bit computer, well, chances are you'll still have a better experience with the 32-bit version. So go ahead and click on that. That will bring you to the actual SourceForge download page. Wait a moment, and eventually the download will pop up. As you can see, this is just a compressed folder or a zip file, so simply save it to disk. As mentioned, you will end up with just a zip file on disk. And if you actually, you know, open it, you'll realize that, well, it's just a bunch of faults. There isn't an installer. And that is just how Virtual Dub works. What you probably want to do is create a folder somewhere consistent, say on your desktop, move the zip file containing Virtual Dub to that folder, and then extract it there. This is quite an important step because we will be coming back to this folder to install and change things. So it is quite important that you are able to find it easily. Go ahead and extract this folder using any way you like. For me, I just go in, copy and paste everything out. And well, that works too. Obviously, if you're using software like WinZip, that works as well. In fact, what you have right here is Virtual Dub itself. Once you double click on Virtual Dub, well, you're going to get a little warning, and once you get past that, this is Virtual Dub. You've basically downloaded it, and you're ready to use it. What you'll find is that at this point of time for, you know, the version of Virtual Dub that you've just installed, it's quite limited when it comes to being able to open files. For example, I have here several MP4 files. When I drag it into Virtual Dub itself, I actually get a warning. It actually says that the file type is unknown or unsupported. And the reason for this is because Virtual Dub only works with AVI files. And these are MP4 files, which Virtual Dub just refuses to work with. To work around this problem, we can install a utility called FF Input Driver, which gives Virtual Dub the ability to open these files. The simplest way to get FF Input Driver is to simply Google it. Go ahead and type it into Google, you know, something like FF Input Driver Virtual Dub, and well, the top results will be a SourceForge project. You'll want to look for one that says something like this, you know, FF MPEG Input Plugin. When you click on it, you will be taken to yet another SourceForge page in which you can download a zip file. So this is exactly as you would expect to wait a couple of seconds, you'll be prompted to download a zip file. Go ahead and confirm it. 
when the download is complete, once again, you're going to end up with another zip file on disk. Now, this one actually contains both the 32-bit and a 64-bit version. Since we've installed 32-bit virtual dub, we're going to be going for the 32-bit version of this plugin. What you have to do now is, if you have virtual dub open, you're going to have to go over and close it. Then simply grab the plugins32 folder, copy it, jump over to the virtual dub folder, and simply paste it. Now, this is what's going to happen. There is already an existing plugins32 folder that virtual dub has created. So what happens when you paste the folder of the same name is you're going to merge the two folders, which is exactly what we want. Go ahead and say yes. And what's going to happen is FF input driver is going to be copied into the plugins32 folder, as you can see right here. All we have to do to test this is to simply try and open an MP4 file in virtual dub itself. So here's the same MP4 file, drag and drop, and it works. Alright, now for the hard part. What we're going to install next is called x264vfw. Once again, Google it, it's the top result. Essentially, this is a little piece of software that is installed over your entire system. And any program that tries to actually write a video can make use of this to create the video file itself. Now, this is a very brief explanation of what a codec does. I've done an 18 minute video in the past that actually goes into detail of what a codec is, why we need it, how we can actually, you know, configure it. To be honest, and I'm not trying to sell my own stuff here, but that video will be extremely useful for you. I understand that it's long, it's dry, and there's a lot of theory in it. But if you're going to be working with video, you need to know some of the fundamentals. So I highly, highly recommend you actually watch that video. But in case you don't, what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through how to download and install this for yourself. You know, eventually when you can't figure out the settings, you'll watch the other video anyway. So here's the deal. Go ahead and stick x264vfw into your Google search box. There is the SourceForge link itself. Once again, we're going through the exact same motion of actually, well, downloading the installer. So in this case, this is actually not a zip file. This is actually a program you can run that will install x264vfw on your computer. So go ahead and save it. And once the download is complete, you will find an executable installer that you can run. Now, for this particular installer, well, you don't really have to do anything special. Go on through, just keep clicking next. On a particular page, you get to choose whether you want to install the 32-bit or the 64-bit version, or both. Generally, you can leave it untouched, just have both on your system, it doesn't hurt. So simply keep going on through and install the plugin on your system. Now, if you had virtual dub open during the installation process just now, you're going to have to close it and reopen it. But to confirm that you do have the codec installed properly, what you're going to do is open up virtual dub, go to video, go to compression, and basically look for x264vfw in the list. If it shows up, everything is great. You can now compress videos using this codec. If you actually want to configure this codec, which you will need to, you can go ahead and click the configure button and you have a whole bunch of settings here that you can change. If you'd like to refer to what my latest settings are, I will have a link in the video description or you can simply pause the video and look at what I have set here. Now disclaimer, these settings are good for my own use. If you are using it in a different sort of situation, you might have to adapt accordingly. If you don't know how to adapt accordingly, that's okay. These settings are quite daunting. Like I said, I have an 18 minute video which I recommend you watch. But yeah, the point is, you're gonna need to have this codec installed. Every time before you save a video, make sure you come into this menu through video compression and make sure you click on x264vfw. As long as it is selected, this will be used to compress your video. All right, we are nearly there. Let us now just go ahead and install a plugin to show you how that works. And as mentioned, the way we're going to do this is we're going to actually install DShaker. So DShaker is a plugin I use a lot. It's pretty cool. It reduces camera shake. It is a very useful plugin that I do also have a huge tutorial for. 
I won't force you to watch this one since you don't actually need it to understand this step, but I will put a link on screen anyway. So right, for this particular plugin, you have a download link here. Most plugins actually give you 32 or 64 bit versions, those that don't are assumed to be 32 bit only. Since we have the 32 bit version of Virtual Dub, we'll want a 32 bit version of this plugin as well. So go ahead and click on the 32 bit link. This also comes to you in a compressed folder. Go ahead and save it. So once again, open or extract the zip file, you know, however way you like. And in this case, all we have is just a single VDF file. VDF stands for Virtual Dub Filter, and that is essentially how you expand upon the capability of Virtual Dub. So how do you install the plugin itself? Simple. If you have Virtual Dub open, go ahead and close it. Now, grab the VDF file and basically bring it into the same plugins32 folder that we've seen earlier on in the virtual dub folder. So this is where virtual dub lives, and this is the plugins32 folder in which we have actually installed FF input driver just now. All we're gonna have to do is to simply copy the dshaker.vdf file over. So once it is in here, we can then now open up virtual dub, go to video, filters, add, and there you go, dshaker is right here. So that is how we install a plugin into Virtual Dub. All you have to do is to download the respective VDF file and put it into the plugins32 folder of your Virtual Dub installation directory. Once you've done that, the filter will automatically appear within the list of filters. And there you go. Today we've covered how to install Virtual Dub, how to extend its input and output capabilities, and finally, how to actually expand upon the functionality of the program itself by downloading and installing plugins. Hopefully this guide has been clear, hopefully it has been useful. Once again, thank you to YouTube user PitPony2006 for suggesting this idea. That's all the rest for this episode, thank you very much for watching and until next time, you're watching 0612 TV. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, consider checking out the rest of my work on my channel. Alternatively, you may be interested in a playlist of my earlier work on computing and computer science topics. If you'd like to show me some monetary support, I am on Patreon. You can find a link to my campaign in the video description. Of course, you can simply like this video or leave a comment. I'll be sure to respond as soon as I can. To keep in touch with my future uploads, do subscribe to this channel. And for even more updates, check out the official Twitter account for this channel at 0612TV. Thank you for your support.